Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Alaikum salam. How can spiritual practices cure an incurable disease within a person as Prophet ﷺ also said such of the black seed? Today everyone consumes but it but is it since we have low iman? That how does the the shifa of the black seed cure the illnesses that Prophet ﷺ described because of uh, the people's faith <coughs> and that their practices that the like in the tariqah teachings everything is a foundation that built upon each other that for wudu to work then all of the steps must be performed. For the salah to have power because Prophet described the salah has power and that the prayers are, are going to be answered and we've described before that's then was the assumption that people were cleaning themselves, having good characters, keeping their wudu, working on their akhlaq so that when they went for their salah, the salah had sincerity in it. But when people leave the prophetic teaching, leave all of the other pieces and keep one or two then they find that there's a great deficiency. If shaitan is inside the person the how the salah is going to benefit them when shaitan already inside them stopping the du'a from going up and the amal and the, the blessings of the person to elevate. So everything is, is a whole packet that with good character, with strong belief, with good practices and following the traditional way of Sayyidina Muhammad then alhamdulillah everything has a shifa and has I- immense blessings and the people eat what Prophet asked them to eat and forbid what he asked them to forbid and to, to not eat. So all of that is an entire system but if everyone wants to do what they want and take one spoon of black seed then we can find that it has a barakah but it's not to the power that it should have been and that's true with uh, everything. But it has its immense blessings and, and it has its own signs and significance, it played an important role in these uh, breathing pandemics and sicknesses that uh, that people were understanding from black seed, the ability to reduce inflammation in the lungs, so it, it played a role. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. But imagine the potential power if people have that level of sincerity and love for Sayyidina Muhammad That's what we described before, that's the key for everything. That uh, we came out of Karbala four nights ago, they were praying and killing Ahlul Bayt, calling Azan and then, hold on, we're going to go back now and slaughter the rest of the family. So something is critically wrong. In, in the people from that time. So imagine how much worse it must be today where killing means nothing to these people. Ahlul Bayt they don't even believe in it. That what was so wrong in the belief that you call azan and you make salah and you're not seeing that this is the family of the Messenger of Allah because they lack a, a religion based on love and muhabbat and good character. If that was the case that time, imagine that it must be now, how much it must be based off of no love where they don't feel a love, they don't think love is important, they don't even know why you even use the word love and they think it's all you know intellect based off of here. 
So yeah, that's a very dangerous understanding and if they were able to do that 1500 years ago, imagine what Sufiani is planning on doing when he's coming out now. Sufiani is the boss of those people. If Yazid was bad, I think Sufiani is going to put everybody to shame, the extent of which he's coming to destroy and to kill. So this, these are these are a condition of a people that are, are, are lacking muhabbat and ishq and that's why the oceans in the last days of salvation they must be based on the who, they must be based on this ishq and hidayah and guidance. Guidance from the hay and they carry the secret of wow which is wadud. So the true who and the true who men they must be propagating love and unconditional love, non-judgmental love and that they try to encompass people and bring them to love. Already immense torment is coming onto earth. So the job of these who is to teach people to love and to love Prophet to connect your heart with Prophet As a result their khuluq, their character will become softer, loving. And as a result what we've been describing for the last uh, few weeks, that love is what's important, that love for Prophet bring the warmth and the good character to insan. Then the religion that they put upon that love is solid and firm. For if the religion is based on arrogance and bad character and no example of goodness then worth nothing. And that's why last days will be like the foam of the ocean where they call like the dirt of the ocean, the scum of the ocean, the foam blows away that the masses of people become of no value and Allah will take them away. But what is necessary is for a core group of people to rise that have an immense love, immense focus on having good character and a good example of the way of Sayyidina Muhammad because already darkness and badness is, is planning its own, its own path, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam How do we heal our breath after abusing it and losing touch with it for so many years? Huh? How do we heal our breath after abusing it and losing touch with it for so many years? How do we heal our breath? Yes. By, by going back into the practices of breathing, connecting and, and breathing. Thinking of something, hold on. InshaAllah that the breathing practices, I'm thinking of something else inshaAllah, the breathing practices as soon as we start it, it starts up immediately. How to focus on the breath, practicing every day a little bit, little by little, little by little until the focus of the breath we can regain and again catch the energy of the breath. and. Meditation is, is a conditioning. Once we condition ourselves into the practices, we begin to feel the energy and pick up the energy of it. InshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Are these hidden knowledges different from the worldly knowledge?
What do you mean? Hid different. Definitely the heavenly knowledge is, is, is different, 100% different than worldly knowledge, dunya knowledges. And that's why there's such a sort of conflict in understanding. People whom don't have that understanding and don't study that reality, they understand where, where is all this coming from? Because there are oceans apart of understanding. I think we gave the example now of aqal. They say, aqal is Allah created, the first thing is intellect, therefore we must be intellectual people. And that's exactly what they'll say, the professors they say, no, no, the first of Allah's creation is aqal and we must have a aqal tie your camel. Because they're assuming the intellect is in here. But when Allah wants to give people an understanding what's called marifa or Gnosticism, Allah opens the reality of what Prophet and begin to bring all the beads into a tasbih. So Allah says, I'm not in heaven, I'm not on earth, I'm in the heart. So then now Allah's directing the most important location for you is where Allah is. So Allah's where? In your head? Allah said, no, I'm in the heart of the believer. And so then now we're focused on the heart, the heart and the qalb and that knowledge comes to the heart of the believer. So with all of these become a bead like a tasbih and that's when these people don't understand how you derived at that. Very easy, if they sit in a room and they don't talk for an hour we can teach them but they won't. Right? Because they keep saying, no, 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 it's a aqal, aqal is a brain, the brain is an intellect. So, no, it's all, let us put it all together for you. That all these beads when they come together, no, no, Allah is directing us to the heart. And in the heart is where knowledge comes. And Allah's ancient knowledge is a ayn. Why Allah put it in the huruf, what Allah cares about are dunya letters or dunya understanding. That's why he said, well what Allah cares about when you say heart, qalb, is there somewhere something beating? No, but Allah is giving us an understanding, you know how heart is important for you? It's the center of your because everything is an analogy, it's the center of your existence but take your heart out you cease to exist. Well there is a qalb in the universe, not that it's beating but it must be the source of power, that from that power everything is, is coming and, and illuminated. Then the huruf of that is the recipe that Allah created with its huruf, its understanding. And that's why then the ilm huruf and the knowledges of huruf then have to be passed from the heart of Prophet down and it comes by inspiration and these are the specialties of Mawlana Shah Naqshband. That these knowledges and these ilmu huruf and, and the knowledges of numbers, the knowledges of muraqabah, the knowledges of uh, these realities and all of them are different sciences. So when these awliya want to bestow from their fruits they begin to open from these sciences and these realities that give the servant a yaqeen, a certainty. So that's why the Nashbandi students have an immense certainty. Because Allah opened the secrets from Mawlana Shah Naqshaban's heart all the way down through their shaykhs, all these huruf are opening and teaching the, the servant. So definite, definite knowledge is completely different. So our understanding of, of Ayn is going to be Alim, Allah's ancient knowledges. And the only way to receive ilm and al alim is to have ayn and to have vision. So it means both this huruf is teaching us, if you want the secret of that ayn then you have to be from the people of ayn, that you have a spiritual vision, your spiritual heart open, not the people of physical eyes but spiritual eyes. 
and all the companions their their names start with Ain. Ali, Omar, Osman and Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq his real name is Abdullah So there, there are the containers of Prophet ﷺ's ancient knowledges that flow through creation, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam. Sayyidi in your talk you mentioned that when energy came then get knowledge by connecting that energy with Adam salam to open our heart. Can you, can you please help us understand this? What did we say? Uh, you mentioned that when energy came, then get knowledges by connecting that energy with Sayyidina Adam I don't know if that's what we said, but that <laughs> Sayyidina Adam is the, is the secret of, of heavenly knowledges that in our spiritual practices he represents the qalb. And the station of the qalb is the opening of knowledges. So when we meditate and contemplate and make a connection with the shaykhs, Sayyidina Adam begins to open the reality of, you're not, you're not a person sitting on this earth, you're from a heavenly reality in which Allah alama kullaha that we taught him all the knowledges so that we are ve vehicles and a vessel of Divinely knowledges but we have to open the qalb. But that's through in, intense muraqabah and connecting with the shaykhs. It's not connecting to power and then Adam will open something. It's to connect with the shaykh but you have to get the book on the meditation, read the book on the meditation, get the book on the lataif on how to connect your heart and how to have the lataif of the qalb to open within the heart of the servant inshaAllah. So all of these are the different practices and, and spiritual practices inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah What is nafsul mutmainna? Is there any relation between zero point energy, losing taste of dunya desire, and nafsul mutmainna? InshaAllah. You have to read the article on the seven layers of the nafs. And the ascension from the lowest nafs returning to the higher inspirational soul. And that all through the practices and the connection on how to connect. What was the, the rest of the question? <coughs> the question is, where it go? Let's see. What is nafs al mutmainna? Is there any relation between zero point energy losing the taste of dunya desires and nafs al mutmainna? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure everything is, is connected in those levels of those, those things that you're, you're commenting on. The nafs al mutmainna is the one whom their, their nafs is calm. That they have a they have a control of themselves and their bad character, and the one whom has a sincerity and ikhlas, and has had like little pieces of everything. So all of, all of that is is true. That these are variables of a reality. That the one whom is meditating, meditating, making istighfar, making their connection continuously making a hisab of themselves, what are they, who are they, what have they done and making their tawbah and asking for forgiveness, for forgiveness, for forgiveness. Zero point energy is that within themselves it begins to shut off the, their hayat dunya their, their love for the dunya and to conquer the dunya and to everything run for the dunya, dunya project after project after project. If you're making enough tawbah the flavor is going away. When, you, when the flavor is going away these 
this energy of hayat is shutting off. Zero point is that the energy of hayat is shutting the hayat al dunya, is shutting off. As soon as it's shut, 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 what happens now? You're not at an excessive dunya energy running to conquer the earth and to have a huge pension, to have a, a, a corporate title. That energy is shutting. So at that point when it's shutting and reaching its lowest state you feel like you're dead, I don't care anymore, I don't, I'm so sick of everything because the flavor is gone, the desire is gone. You, you sit ready to that you know death is coming to you anytime that's better. That has to come to the servant and then the testing, the difficulty, they have absolutely no desire to do anything. Not to be lazy because they have a tremendous himma, they want to do all these things for akhirah and those start to pick up, those are, are more appealing to them. As a result the one energy has to shut down and when it reaches that zero point like mouth, they feel a state of death coming to them. And if they have strong ibadah, strong worshipness, strong khidmat and that's why the emphasis is because this is how the shaykh was trained and the, the zeal of the shaykh was to continuously do, continuously do, continuously give, continuously serve. But that was unknown to anyone, it's not necessary to know. As a result when one energy dies there's a point in which it becomes zero, that's like flat line death. At that point Allah will then reverse it in which their himma takes over and the strength of their himma begins to power them. So they reached a point in which they died and now they're operating off of a heavenly energy because they're more of their soul is operating than their physicality. And that's when they have a tremendous zeal to do spiritual practices, to do the, the, the spiritually beneficial things. And again by example of the shaykhs, so the shaykh you follow their himma is to do all of these different things to keep people active, to keep people participating, to continuously present ourselves to the presence of Prophet If you follow a shaykh that just sitting in one place not doing anything, not having anything, not serving anything then that's not the best example. So the shaykh has to lead by example that in 20 different places, 20 different things, 20 different projects to keep having a himma and a zeal for pleasing Allah and His Rasul And that's what's important to lower that one energy and then it becomes a, a death but then Allah revives it now with a spiritual himma. And then they have a spiritual zeal in which to conquer for heavenly realities and to reach strong heavenly realities and by the reality of their khidmat and what's coming onto their soul then the immensities of energies and all the, the different blessings that are coming out because of the energy that dressing the soul of that individual not the physicality. They reversed and now they operate from their soul, people can feel their soul. One whom is not reversed people can't feel anything from them because the, the physical person whom is physical you can't feel anything from them. They talk in an interesting way that may appeal to your mind. There are many professors like that that talk and say, oh this is interesting what he's saying but I don't think he really knows anything from his soul. So that's something different but the one whom speaks from their soul there's an energy and there's a soul attraction to people whom are trying to operate from their soul. That's why people whom they're conscious through their heart and soul they're attracted to a soul talker. They're not interested in a, in a head talker. Head talker to heart people is like immediately no, no because it's going to the wrong place. This guy's trying to talk to my head, I'm absolutely not interested. And the same is the reverse, the people whom are too heavy in their head and they want you to you know intellectualize everything for them. When a spiritual speaker speaks they immediately zone out, they shut off like a… like you turn the switch for off. So the, the organs are being different, they want something through their head they're shutting off. The other one who's through their soul is being revived, that's why they don't fall asleep in their associations. Because when you're sleeping when the shaykh is speaking means your heart is, is shutting off, something's not right, you should be, be fed from that energy. 
and you should have a zeal for that energy to come into your being. If it's too heavy drink coffee, drink lots of tea, do whatever you can to keep yourself awake for that energy to hit you and dress you. If you're not interested in the heart then you fall asleep because you want something from your head. So you're at the wrong buffet. So these are associations for people whom are interested through their heart. As a result they're being fed energies and they can feel it. If they're tired and sleepy they have to have tea and coffee before their associations. Shaykh Daghestani Sultanul Awliya would drink 11 cups of black tea before fajr. Why? Because he's carrying the universe at his fajr time so he's not going to fall asleep in the presence of Prophet So we don't want to have everybody drinking 11 cups of tea but this understanding is if you're coming to get fed from your soul then sit up and be attuned and aware and take the energy. Otherwise shaitan make you to go out and you lost that, that opportunity. So it's very important to, to keep oneself ready and receiving through their heart inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Can you please tell us a little more about Shah Naqshband? Yeah we just told you their realities <laughs> and the, the articles that we have on the website I think they're putting out in audio books, you can click on the audio and the book of the life of Mawlana Shah Naqshband and uh, all of the teachings of Mawlana Shah Naqshband are nurmuhammad.com which is an immense uh, resource of these realities. We said rarely you'll find uh, one of the subjects of Naqshbandiya uh, on anything. More or less on that website there's all these different understandings of ilm huruf, the muraqaba, the, the taif of the qalb and all of these. So that website is, is one of the, the great uh, signs of Mawlana Shah Naqshban's presence and his, his madad and support that uh, these are from those knowledges. So if you want the history and the history lesson you can read the articles. If you want the knowledges of Mawlana Shah Naqshban then you're getting them through the website and you can Google any of the subjects on the website that have been taught and those are the Naqshbandi realities. And they, they go from the levels of the heart to realities of the numbers, how to connect the heart, realities of muraqaba and the connections with the shaykh. So alhamdulillah it's a complete sort of encyclopedia of Mawlana Shah Naqshban's teachings, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Alaikum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how can we be protected from Sufiani fitna and killing? Love Prophet that's the immensity and that's the, the sadness now that uh, is it depleting love that the nation is, 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 is… if it falls away from that love and the ish and ihtiram and the respect of Sayyidina Muhammad it's a… Uh, the aql that shaitan plays with on people that make them to take a key of power and connection and take it out. And we said before the whole key of all these realities of protections and la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyu nadeem that power to reach to a servant is based on the love of Prophet and never Allah's power will reach to somebody whom doesn't have that love. That's why the condition of Muslims you see them they lose everything, they're not victorious in anything. You think Allah is not supporting? But if they lose the love of Prophet they are like a, a, a plastic flower that means nothing. So that's all shaitan wants and take out that key and they just become like a plastic fruit, nothing, no value, no taste, no flavour, no nothing. So that's why then the condition of the last days is to revive people's hearts and keep the love. That's why now we're rolling into the milad. Why is the milad so important is that we said all of these realities are based on that ishq. If, if not for the birth then the perfection of Islam would not have entered onto this earth. If not for the birth of Prophet not of Islam would have come onto this earth. Means all these realities of just the physical realm. Then imagine that we said before all Nur Muhammadi and all these realities, everything is coming from that reality of the birth, the birth of the light first, that the light came into existence. When Allah 
wanted to be known, hidden treasure I want to be known and created what? La ilaha illallah? No. But when Allah wanted to be known means La ilaha illallah wanted to be known by what? Muhammadun Rasulullah Allah didn't create La ilaha illallah to be known because that already tells you, no, 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 don't look here. But when he wanted to be known, created Muhammadun Rasulullah, that's milad. So as soon as you celebrate the mawlid, anticipate, participate, be active in the mawlid, the Nabi is as if a key is opening within the heart of the servant back to the origin of their reality that, Ya Rabbi there's nothing more important to me than the milad of the Prophet that to my life is to live from milad to milad. If you give me himma and a zeal to reach to that and the whole 12 months all I do is talk about that and that reality, then you, you pray that Allah sees a purpose in your existence, what we call the tashrif. So what's your purpose? Oh Ya Rabbi my purpose is to show the magnificent status of the reality of your most beloved servant, it's okay. That sounds like a good reason to keep you in existence. And so then you teach the same thing for all the students who follow you. That are why Allah keeping us for houses and cars and, and to, to make life insurance payments? No, but that Ya Rabbi with what you give to me I want to spread this love in the middle of this immense darkness. I want to be one of those whom spread the love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad Even if it's small and not compared to you know people with 100 million uh, people in their event or 50 million people in it doesn't matter. But for whatever Allah gave to me, my life is to spread that reality. So then the key of our success is the milad. That when these milads are happening we're supporting, we're moving towards that mawlid because Allah revives the heart at every moment for the sake of what you've done, I'm opening your heart in that milad. I let the, the reality of milad open within your wujud so that Muhammadun Rasulullah blossoms within your reality, overtakes who you are and that you become Muhammadiyoon, that's what's the immensity. When, when Prophet is describing your faith has to be that you love me more than you love yourself. Then look at the internet, they, they have for themselves huge gatherings, huge parties because they, they reached the millionaire's club on real estate, because their daughter got married, their son got married, because they got this or they did that. But that's not the hadith. The hadith you see you were supposed to love me more than you love yourself. Once you do for me, for Prophet then do whatever you want for yourself, it doesn't matter. And that's what our life is, is that first let us do for Sayyidina Muhammad beautific, grand, all year long promoting about that reality, all year long talking about that reality. Our life has then a purpose and a, and a reason and, a, and a, a reason for existence and then gives us the key of that opening within our existence. That if you want that light of Muhammadun Rasulullah to open within the heart and the soul of the servant then celebrate the mawlid, propagate the mawlid, participate in the milad and that's all year round we're doing that with these events, with the majlis of Salawat al Nabi three times a week, with supporting the orphans and all of these different projects, all of that are Madani are all the ashiqeen hitting the streets, feeding people, doing good deeds so that they see and they know who we are. People who see us out there with the beards and turbans and the beautiful blue vans, they see these are these madani, these are these ashiqeen, these lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad putting their faith in action. Where are the other ones? Why don't they compete with us and get yourself five vans and get on the road and feed people? Give uh, 600 water wells and we did I think over a hundred qurbans on, on for, for Karbala. So alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah Allah is giving us more and more himma, more and more excitement for people to participate. We said before we were sitting before and having one cake and thought that was a great accomplishment. Then we sat down with one cake, we made a big happy huya 
And then I'll <laughs> open, accept it and say, no, I want you to have your cake in a bigger gathering and let everybody else have some cake with you too. So when Allah finds satisfaction in what you do, it's only Allah that can open, not, not uh, anybody else. So that's the importance is that Allah open for us and mm -hmm. our life then to propagate, spread mm -hmm. it, show the love. What more beautiful than the, the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad are out there giving water, you know, giving food and gi giving qurban, giving everything and, and uh, repairing masjids and repairing orphanages and, and doing everything to show that these ashaqiyoon there they want the nazar of Prophet and they want their faith in action, they want it to be written that we believed and this is our, our iman and nobody can take that from us inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifu, salaamun wa mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.